Hi, my name's James Robert. I make violins. I've been making violins for quite a few years now. I've worked on over 20 Stradivaries and many fine Amatis and Guarneris. I've had my instruments used at Juilliard and the National Symphony. It's believed that Andrei Samadhi invented the violin in Cremona, Italy in the mid-1500s, and in so doing he started a school of making that has never been surpassed. One of the things that distinguishes the classical Cremonese makers from others is the beautiful varnish they used. I've spent most of my life researching this varnish, and I believe I have a pretty close approximation of it. Years ago, I was lucky enough to have spent a month working on the Amati viola made for French King Henry IV in 1590. And so using photographs and working notes, I made a copy of it. Not an exact copy by any means, but similar to the original. A little about the history of the instrument. As stated, it was made for Henry IV by a member of the Amati family. Henry was one of France's most loved kings, and he was a patron of the arts. He took good care of his subjects. Regardless, he was assassinated in 1610. The viola survived the French Revolution, but King Henry's body did not fare so well. He was dug up, decapitated, and reburied in a common grave. Fortunately, his head has been recovered, and there are plans to reunite his remains. This picture shows a full-size photo of the viola. This is what I'll be working mostly from. To the right are the various pieces of wood used in the construction. Here are the sides formed around the mold and the back rough to shape. I temporarily glued the back to the sides to adjust the edge margins. Finishing the arching of the back with a thumb plane, tops and backs are carved and not bent to shape as one would think. This picture shows the groove being cut for the inlay that goes around the edge. It's done with a knife and small chisel. Here is the back with the inlay called purfling completed. A close-up of the edge being sunk with a gouge. The edge has been blended into the back and the back is completed. Here is the back ready to be permanently glued to the sides. And this is how it's glued on. Here is the spruce for the top, joined and planed flat. The top is getting the same treatment as the back. And here is the top ready for F-holes. F-holes are cut with a knife. The last thing I do before I glue it all together is make a label for it. I make the labels with 250 year old paper and write with a quill pen. And here's the body completed. Now for the neck and scroll. Here I'm shaping the scroll profile with a chisel and rasp. Starting to carve the scroll. And here it is, finished and ready for varnishing. While I was carving the neck, I went ahead and varnished the body. Normally, I would varnish the whole instrument at once, but because of the decoration, I did this to save time. Started roughing in the design on the back using dividers, gluing the neck into the body, and here is the back with the design almost finished. Some of the decoration was done with gold leaf. I'll paint the design on the leaf with varnish and then rub away the excess. And here it is finished. Sorry to say, I have no recording of how this viola sounds. It was bought by a dealer before I finished it and set up to play at their shop. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and please feel free to contact me with any questions you may have. Thank you.